Hello, and thank you for joining me for Mindful Monday. I'm Daphne Lee of Highly Sensitive and Strong. Each Monday, I offer a guided meditation and talk. If you're catching this as a replay and you'd like to join our Mindful Monday meditation community live on Zoom, click the link below or in the description to get signed up for free. We'd love to have you. And now on to today's practice and talk. So today we will explore watering the seeds of joy. And my teacher Thich Nhat Hanh often said that to be alive is a miracle and that the conditions for joy are always present. And we all know that life contains suffering. It can be really hard at times and our brains literally have a negativity bias. As the psychologist Rick Hansen often says, your brain is like Velcro for the negative and Teflon for the positive. But when we pause and we look deeply, we can see that the potential for joy also exists. And by working with our neuroplasticity or our ability to create new neural pathways, because the brain is always changing based on where we place our focus and what we choose to take in, we can practice taking our fleeting and positive experiences in life and turn them into lasting resources inside our own brain. So today's practice does just that. It's an opportunity to water seeds such as joy and strength and emotional balance, surrender and calm confidence so we can grow those qualities within ourselves. So please find a comfortable posture that feels both relaxed and alert. And if it's safe and comfortable for you, go ahead and close the eyes or just take a soft downward gaze. So just allow your attention to settle into the body. Find a position of comfort and ease so you can be both relaxed and alert. And take a few deep breaths and allow yourself to just release a couple of nice, big, audible exhalations. As you breathe deeply, allow your shoulders to drop, releasing anything that you don't need right now, letting things just roll off your back so you can enjoy your practice. And now release any control of your breathing so you're just allowing the breath to flow naturally. And for this meditation, I'm going to share a statement followed by a few words that you can repeat to yourself with each breath. So there'll be a statement for your inhalation and another one for your exhalation. And then I'll condense that down to just a one or one or a few key words that you can repeat to yourself sort of as a mantra, as, a, as an anchor for your mind, and even as um, an intention of perhaps something that you'd like to embody. And we'll do a few rounds with a few different statements. 
So again, just turning your attention back to the natural rising and falling of the breath. Normally I like to do this practice using a bell, but I've discovered that this particular microphone does not pick up the sound of the bell. So I'll simply guide us with my voice. Breathing in, I'm aware this is an in-breath. Breathing out, I am aware this is an out breath. In, out. And as you continue with in and out, you might find that the out breath becomes deeper and longer than the in breath, providing you with a sense of safety and comfort and well being. In out Breathing in, I am aware of my whole body. Breathing out, I relax my body. Aware of my body, relaxing my body.
Breathing in, I know that I am alive. Breathing out, I feel the richness of being alive. So to be alive is a miracle. In this moment, every cell in your body is pulsing with the energy of life. And sometimes we get caught in the anxiety of the future or regrets about the past or our projects in the present. And we forget the simple fact that we are alive. So breathing in, I am aware of being alive. Breathing out, I feel the richness of life in my heart. Aware of being alive, feeling the richness of life. Breathing in, I am aware of the feelings and emotions that are present right now. Breathing out, I allow 
the waves of my feelings to be present. Sometimes we experience strong emotions, love, heartache, anger, anxiety, grief. And sometimes when these feelings arise in us, we don't have the opportunity to care for them at the moment they arise. So in this moment, hold your feelings like a loving mother holding her baby. Take good care of your feelings. Breathing in, aware of my emotions. Breathing out, caring for my feelings with love. Aware of my emotions, caring for my feelings. Breathing in, I'm aware of the many conditions of joy in my life. And breathing out, I allow the feeling of joy to nourish me. There are so many conditions for joy. This beautiful planet that we live on, with all of its forests, and beaches, and mountains, and prairies, the smile of a child, the song of a bird, the comfort of a loving pet, the nourishment of a meal, the beauty of a flower, as I breathe in, I'm aware of the many conditions for joy. Breathing out, I am nourished. Aware of joy, I am nourished.
Breathing in, I am aware that I am breathing in. Breathing out, I smile. Breathing in, I smile. You might allow a gentle smile to reach your lips. And now gently let go of the words. And just begin to notice your physical sensations. Feel your arms and legs, your hands and feet. Notice the rising and falling of the breath. Notice any sounds that you can hear in and around the room that you're in. I can hear the wind blowing. And I can hear my cat outside my door. <laughs> and then when you are ready, open your eyes. And maybe just take a moment to do a little gentle stretching. Mm -hmm. Or you might want to hydrate if you have something to hydrate with. So I wanted to... Since we started with our practice today, I wanted to take just, just a few minutes to talk about joy. And meditation and mindfulness are such wonderful, nourishing practices. And from there, we can begin to explore how we can extend the wisdom of the practices beyond our cushions and into our daily lives um, in order to develop our compassion or to experience more peace and joy in our lives. And when we weave 
when we weave our mindfulness practices into our daily routines, we can feel more grounded, more stable and anchored. And it can be as simple as just bringing our full attention to whatever task is at hand, whether that's brushing our teeth, engaging in a conversation, drinking our tea, or, you know, fully appreciating our shower or our meal. And in my teacher's tradition, um, they often used gathas or short mindfulness verses to help us dwell in the present moment. And um, there's a wonderful little book that I've had for over 20 years now. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try to hold it up. It's called Present Moment, Wonderful Moment by Thich Nhat Hanh. This is a really old version of it. I'm sure they came out with newer ones. Um, but um, in the introduction, so I want to actually read a little, a little piece from the introduction of it. In the introduction, uh, Ty says, one way to dwell in the present moment is to practice reciting mindfulness verses. And when we focus our mind on a gatha or mindfulness verse, we return to ourselves and we become more aware of each action. So when the gatha ends, we continue our action with heightened awareness. And I found for myself that it was a this was a really useful tool for consciously bringing more mindfulness into my own daily life. And, um, and there's some that have really stuck with me over the years that I find myself saying at times. Um, one of them from the book is on waking up and it says, Waking up this morning, I smile. 24 brand new hours are before me. I vow to live fully in each moment and to look at all beings with eyes of compassion. So this one, we can see it's like we're setting an intention um, you know, we're setting an intention to try to really um, dedicate ourselves to living fully in the moment and then also practicing compassion. And if you remember this before getting out of bed in the morning, then you're setting that powerful intention for the day. Um, Ty suggests that in order to, re to, um, to remember, like to do things like to smile in the morning, cause I, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I first wake up, there are times when I can, my mind can immediately go into, you know, oh, maybe like I feel stiff or thinking about all the things that I have to do my to-do list for the day. And, um, and, and that's with practice. Well, I often catch it when I'm, when I'm doing that so that I can choose to start my day very consciously in a different way. And so setting intentions can be really powerful for that. So you could, for example, um, you know, put up sticky notes, <laughs> like put a little sticky note on your bathroom mirror that reminds you to smile, to be present as you brush your teeth in the morning. You could uh, hang something beautiful or inspiring that you'll see when you first open your eyes in the morning to remind you, you know, to, to start your day intentionally. Um, and with practice, oftentimes you, we'll start to notice that 
you don't need the sign anymore. If you do it often enough, eventually the sign could go away and you still remember to smile when you hear the birds singing, you know, when you wake up in the morning. Um, and smiling to start the day is a really beautiful practice so that we can um, just start the day in a, in a gentle and, and positive way. Another one that I really like because it's just so, it's such a part of our everyday life that we can so easily take for granted. There's one for using um, each time when you turn on the tap to get your water. And it says, water flows from high in the mountains and water runs deep in the earth. Miraculously, water comes to us and sustains all life. And in his commentary on this one, Tai said that, you know, water is such a good friend to us that it's nourishing countless species on the earth and its benefits are numberless. And so um, to celebrate the gift of water is to cultivate our awareness um, and just recognizing how water is something that we sometimes take for granted really is sustaining our lives and the lives of so many others. We, can, we can't live without water. And so when we start to train ourselves to appreciate these little, little, but actually huge things in life, then our level of joy and our level of gratitude starts to increase in life. And you don't have to, I mean, you can make up your own gathas, your own mindfulness verses, and you can pick really simple ones. It might be, you know, turn on your, turn on the water and just say, thank you, water, <laughs> you know, um, I will often, you know, think of, think about because of Ty's teachings, I was, will often, uh, you know, when I'm pouring my tea is like recognizing, ah, you know, this, this tea, you know, like started out as a cloud <laughs> in the sky that at some point rained down somewhere and ended up in the water system and through all the processes that we go through now to get that water clean and safe. And then it arrives in my tap and, you know, it's, and it's like recognizing when we, when we uh, even just go to the grocery store and purchase food about like how many, how much effort went into producing that food and getting it to the grocery store. And, and, um, and we, so we can just start to simply practice in these ways of recognizing all these things in our lives that are conditions for joy, um, that are so nourishing to us. And, and when we practice mindfulness throughout the day, day it can really enhance our joy. Um, Ty would say that it returns us to the wonders of the moment and we are renewed with heightened awareness and appreciation. So when we practice in this way, you know, we take time perhaps to stop and smell the roses and we're very present in that moment with the beauty of the flower. And, and then, and then we move on and we have that heightened awareness and that appreciation and that can really help to grow our, jo our joy. So I want to do a short practice, very short. I'm going to ask you, I invite you to close your eyes again, come back to your breathing. And just bring to mind one simple activity or routine that is part of your everyday life. It could be getting out of bed or getting into bed at night, could be brushing your teeth, 
whatever it is, just let one small activity come alive in your awareness, in your memory right now that you do pretty much every day. And I'd like you to consider how does this small action nourish you? How does it help you to have a good day? Or how does it reflect your self-care or perhaps your care for others? And just let a feeling or some words come up expressing the value of this small part of your day. And you might notice that the joy you receive is not so small after all. I mean, what, what comes to mind, for example, is, you know, brushing my teeth and, and knowing that, you know, in the not so distant past, people had a, didn't have access to dental care. Um, and, and there are some people now who don't. And, and that the health of our mouth impacts our overall health and the health of our heart even is, can be affected by our mouth. So when we start to look deeply, even at these small things that we do in our, our daily life, we can see that what we receive from these little things are, are actually um, quite, quite big or quite worthy of, of um, bringing us joy. So when you're ready, if you haven't already, open your eyes again. And I just want you, I want to invite you to experiment on your own with these many little parts of our days that make up our lives, which are rich with meaning when we um, recognize them. And that there are many, many expressions of joy that we can explore and develop within ourselves. Um, You know, we can we can get joy just from noticing the conditions that are already present in our lives, like having a safe bed to sleep in, having clean water to drink. Sometimes we take these things for granted, but we can see ourselves as, you know, that we're receiving so much each day that these great gifts that we have access to and we can actively cultivate this kind of joy which happens really naturally when we learn to give our full attention to the present moment <clears throat> so we know you know life contains, it, it's so rich. You know, I started out tonight by acknowledging that we, we also suffer. Um, and Ty would say that if we didn't balance out our um, suffering with our happiness, that we can become overwhelmed by our suffering and then... Um, you know, we're not, we're not as good for ourselves or for others. We can't be um, maybe as helpful in the world and cultivating happiness and cultivating joy is the antidote to our suffering. And the reality is, is that our world, both our internal world and the world around us is filled with every kind of feeling right? We have all these different feelings, all these different situations. There's trauma, there's fear, there's despair, there's war, there's people doing hurtful things to other people. 
And there's also joy and wonder and bliss and delight and beauty and people doing really kind, selfless acts for others. And we have all of these seeds in our consciousness, in our store consciousness. We have all of them living in us as potential. And it's up to us to decide what we will consciously water. And we do that, again, by what we choose to put our attention on and what we choose to bring in. And so if we choose to water the wholesome seeds in us or the joyful and peaceful and nourishing seeds in us, um, then we're really building a foundation that can allow us to experience more peace and also to allow us to experience the suffering that we inevitably experience without necessarily completely falling apart, or at least not for really extended periods of time. Life contains it all. And so the question is, can we allow the joy to serve as our foundation so that we're solid even when the really hard stuff comes along? And the way that we can do that is by remembering to touch the beauty of life even during our times of suffering and throughout all the little moments of the day that we have to be grateful for. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful week. <laughs>